All righty. Our next Jason recipient is Earl A. Pfeiffer, Executive Director, Florida Home Partnership. Where's Earl? Come on up, Earl. <laughs> Mr. Pfeiffer is a third generation home builder, has been Executive Director of Florida Home Partnership for 19 years and has overseen the construction of over 800 self-help homes in Hillsborough and Pasco counties. Earl is a certified residential contractor and a real estate broker in Florida and Colorado. Now, Florida and, no, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone, I'm gonna leave that alone. He joined FHP, formerly known as Homes for Hillsborough, as the executive director in 1997 Mr. Pfeiffer has over 35 years of construction, real estate, quasi-government, and management experience. Earl has worked with local, city, county, state, and federal governments to provide families and communities with safe, decent, and affordable housing options. From 1988 to 1997, Earl was the general manager and co-owner of Pfeiffer Affordable Homes in Tampa where he was part of the pilot purchase and rehab program of HUD's Hope 3 and the City of Tampa's Challenge Fund for Infill Housing Projects. As the Executive Director of FHP, Earl has assisted over 800 low-income families build their own homes in Hillsborough and Pasco counties. He has become a leading advocate in building green and energy-efficient homes and developing self-help housing opportunities and communities that are indistinguishable from modern income, from moderate income market rate communities. Uh, in addition to the self-help housing, Earl and his team became the leading partner for Hillsborough County's Neighborhood Stabilization Projects, NSP. Y'all all remember that, don't you? <laughs> Project, projects and programs include an 80 unit development in the plant city known as Alexander Woods Townhome, which is currently 71% sold out, and acquisition rehab sale of 23 single family homes. Under Earl's guidance, FHP also manages Hillsborough County's owner occupied housing rehabilitation program for low and very low uh, income homeowners. Earl believes that the goal of affordable housing is to raise the standard of living for the low and moderate income families and their children while assisting them to in becoming productive and contributing members in our communities. Come on up, girl. <laughs> that makes me feel really old. <laughs> and I'm really not that old. Good evening. I'd like uh, my team to come up here, if you all would, please because I didn't do this by myself. I'm only one person. This is where the credit is due. You too, come on. You're part of my story, part of the history. Uh, it is truly an honor to, um, to receive this award, the Skip Jason Community Service Award. Um, and I'm humbled as well. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I, I grew up in the construction business. My, I'm a third generation builder. My dad was a builder. My grandpa was a business, a builder. Um, my family owned a lumber yard. So since I could walk, I was growing up around construction, around, um, all kinds of construction related activities. I just, I, studied construction in school, and my brother and I had a business in Tampa building homes for first-time home buyers, and I became very passionate about it. It was very, very exciting to give the keys of a home to a first-time buyer. And um, <clears throat> as with many programs, this was a unique pilot program. Um, we built many, many homes over 10 years in that program, but that program came to an end. Um, we did a lot of rehab and, and helped a lot of families from Tampa's inner city. And again, that was truly rewarding to me. Um, but I could see the end was coming. And one day I was desperate and thumbing through the Tampa Tribune 
and I saw a Help Wanted ad, Executive Director for Homes for Hillsboro, which was a nonprofit doing self-help housing. And I said, what the heck is a self-help housing? But I had learned during the years that a, the nonprofits that I worked with to fulfill my mission as a private builder, they were the ones that made all the money and they stayed clean and they helped people just like I did, but they made almost as much money as I did. And so, um, and they had their hands on the streams of all the federal grant dollars coming into the city of Tampa and to Hillsborough County. And I was out there working and people were stealing my building materials and I was losing money. So um, long story short, in October of 1997, I was hired as the executive director of, of uh, Homes for Hillsborough, which later became Florida Home Partnership. Um, it was kind of a disaster. I know Florida, home, uh, Florida nonprofit housing folks are here. They can attest to the fact. Um, what happened is the old executive director was fired at a box meeting on Friday, and I started on Monday morning. And um, it was very, very challenging. And um, so I really spent the next 10 years building a team. It was really, really hard to... Um, to find a team, to get the right players to help me in my mission of, of putting a, a rural community residents in, uh, in their own homes. And um, one of the social workers in the office next door said, hey Earl, I know you're looking for um, a loan specialist, somebody to help you reach out to the families. And, and there's a lady who was in the first group of self-help homeowners, her name is Hope, and she's a She's one of your homeowners. She's applying for a job at an insurance company in Tampa. Maybe you could get her to work for you. I know she'd rather work right in her community than, than travel into Tampa. So that opened up my eyes. We, I hired Hope, and I learned that people, the, the residents that we serve in the community have a lot of passion, just like me. And it energized me. <clears throat> and it energized all the clients that came into our office to to find out about affordable housing. Um, single moms came to see us with little kids and um, uh, we had single moms working for us and, and they would say, hey, if I did it, you can do it. So then the next thing we wanted to do was put some of our construction staff, the self-help field staff, um, some of the families that had worked with us. And, and I found in the almost 20 years that I've been here that the best people we can find. Every time we have a, a job opening, um, we open it up to our self-help families. We send a letter, a mailer out to hundreds of families saying we have this job opening. And I always blame that on uh, Hack and Moises because of the Section 3 requirement that says we've got to reach out to people. <laughs> and so that's been my excuse all along. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we've had our challenges over the years with... Uh, everything that we do, but we've always been compliant for Section 3. So uh, my founder of our organization, Dorothy Duke, who passed away in 1998, um, she said, um, Earl, I want you to go to Washington to go to the um, hack shop, the hack conference. And I said, what is a hack conference? And she told me. And she said, I want you to meet a dear old friend of mine, Moises Loza. Meet him, he's a nice man, and he will take care of you. And um, Dorothy has been, her words ring true to me still today. Um, and so it is with that I'd like to just thank Moises for his dedication to all of us, to all of what we do, especially to me and to my organization. Um, around the year 2000, we got the first million dollar shop loan that Hack ever issued, and they were a little nervous, that's a lot of money. We delivered very well and um, have been uh, building a relationship since then. So thank you, Moises, for that. Um, so after 10 years, we got our house in order. And um, Selvin, where are you, Selvin? Selvin's here somewhere. I, lights are bright. OK, Selvin from non, Florida Nonprofit Housing said, Earl, I think that you now have your house in order. You need to go to D.C. and start to get involved with the National Rural Housing Coalition and Inertia, uh, the National Rural Self-Help Housing Association. And um, 
so I did, and I, I actually, I, I was up here and I, I went into a, a National Rural Housing Coalition was having a board meeting, and um, I went in that room by mistake and listened to Bob Raposa talk, and um, I was drawn in. And um, so I've now been a, a, a board member of the Rural Housing Coalition for, I don't know, probably going on 10 years. And then I got involved with the, um, the Inertia, which is a great group for all of us self-help grantees. And if you don't belong to it, you should, because they do incredible work to help all of us carry out our mission in self-help. I want to say thanks to just a couple of people. Andy Savadra. Um, Andy was a... Andy was a, um, a loan officer, I hope I have that title correct, here at Hack, And um, he traveled out um, to our community, and this was before, it was right when Andy got his driver's license. Um, <laughs> He would visit his aunt, as he would say, in Florida, and he came to visit me. And he was nervous because it was like his first long trip trip was to come and come to Ruskin and visit us. But what Andy saw out there, he was very impressed. He liked the development work we were doing, building large de development communities. That's my background. And um, so Andy asked me at the next Hask conference, would you be a speaker and talk about land development. I was honored, I was flattered, and I was as nervous as hell. Um, I just prayed that my session would end and I would, I would um, do okay. I was very, very nervous. But I did, it was great, so thank you for your faith and confidence in me, Andy. I wanted to thank uh, Bob Raposa. Bob is a great guy. When times are scary, like they are today, he keeps us going in the right direction. Um, also, um, again, Moises has just been a, a great um, comfort to us and our organization. On several occasions, he's f flown from D.C. to Ruskin to be part of groundbreakings and activities we've had and really celebrated us and uh, added a lot of um, dimension to our organization. And, and the shop program that Hack and Moises administer has been a great benefit to us. I wanted to acknowledge a couple more members from the peers that I work with. Peter Carey has been a divine inspiration to me. <laughs> Peter, as the executive director, the past executive director of Self Help Enterprises, um, you know, they're the largest self help grantee in the country. And um, Peter has been so accessible and so easy to talk to, and um, I've just been amazed that he's shared some things with me that have really helped me shape my organization. So thank you, Peter. And, and the last two guys <clears throat> I want to mention is Russ Huxtable and Tom Collishaw. I serve with them on the um, inertia board. And again, they've just been really open and encouraging and helpful to me and our organization in the work that we carry out. Um, this is wonderful, the, the networking that we have here in DC and how everyone is willing to share with one another what it is that they do for the hopeful growth of the, of the person they're talking with. Finally, I have this staff here. This is um, my finance manager, David, Vanessa Josie, my business manager, who is, she entered the, she came to work for us when she was real young, and still young. she's still young, <laughs> and for years she took pride in saying she was the youngest employee we had, and she started as a receptionist, she's now the business manager, but when she started there, um, after answering the phone all day for month after month after month, telling people about the self-help program, she came to me one day and said, could I get one of those self-help homes? So <laughs> she had it, she lived in it for 10 years, and then she recently sold it and bought a market home. Um, Eileen, <laughs> Eileen next to her, um, she used to be my boss actually, Eileen was in the uh, very first self-help group that we 
ever started. And when I came to work at Florida Home Partnership, her home had been under construction for a very long time. It took so long that her and her children ended up living in a church, and she would call me occasionally in the evenings and say, you know, we're still in the church. Could you do anything to help us uh, get the construction done faster? She then became our, um, a board member, which was our board secretary. She was on our board for how long? Five and a half years. Five and, a half years. and then we opened a field in the position, a position in the field, and she said, I want to go out and work as a construction coordinator building homes. I built my home, I built my daughter's home, and I would like to do it. And I was really nervous. For, for those guys, directors that have boards and have a really, really good board secretary, you're really kind of not wanting to let them go. But um, she has come to work for us, and she's now a project, uh, project manager. And still do the minutes. And, and she still does the minutes, yes. Best secretary we ever had. And um, Joey Henderson, he is our community development manager, does our PR for us. And he already ha had his own home when, when we hired him. Um, but he is the one that I'd like to thank for my, making my nomination. <laughs> Finally, next to Joey is Jesse, Jesse Arnellis. Um, Jesse started to build his home, his self-help home in 2000, uh, or maybe 1999, and when I first met Jesse, uh, he was with his wife, Victoria, who traveled with him, and Victoria was extremely pregnant, very, very pregnant. I walked into the loan office, and the two of them were sitting there being interviewed for their home, and um, she was extremely pregnant. <laughs> Jesse um, worked pretty much single-handedly during that process of the construction. Had, they have two sons, and he was watching the sons and, and, and working. And um, the young lady there on the end is really why I do this work. Her name is Emma. She is that baby that um, they had when they were in the loan office. <laughs> and To me, this is, this, is, this is what gets me up in the morning. This is what motivates me, is all the Emmas in our community. She's a beautiful young woman. She is doing very well in the high school. And um, for all of us who are engaged in what we're doing, to see the products that come from our communities with the love and the hard work and the dedication of their parents that help build their own homes, um, Emma just really does it. She says it all for me and probably all of you. So I have a great team, and it's with this great team that we were able to accomplish what we do. Thank you.